a choppy trading company and alter new media production. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. This is going to be a great story. So this is about and called The Snowman by Hans Christian Andersen. And it's about a snowman that falls in love with a hot stove. Hey, everybody. Hi, everyone. Like we said, we're going to read The Snowman by Hans Christian Andersen. Now, do you remember what that's about? Yes, yes, I do. It's about a snowman who falls in love with a hot stove. That's right. Pretty good memory, Millicent. Yay, I can't wait to hear it. Yes, so this is how it starts. It is so delightfully cold, said the snowman, that it makes my whole body crackle. This is just the kind of end, to blow the life back into one. Wow, that great red thing up there is staring at me. He meant the sun, who was just setting. It shall not make me wink. I shall manage to keep the pieces. Well, wait, Heidi, I don't understand. It's a talking snowman? Yes, Millicent, and you're a talking mouse. Oh, yes, you're right. <laughs> okay, keep reading. Okay, so this is what he looked like. He had two triangular pieces of tile in his head instead of eyes. His mouth was made of an old broken rake and was of course furnished with teeth. He had been brought into existence amidst the joyous shouts of boys, the jingling of sleigh bells and the slashing of whips. The sun went down and the full moon rises, large, round and clear, shining in the deep blue. Ooh, that sounds pretty. Yeah. There it comes from the other side, said the snowman, who supposed the sun was showing himself once more. Ah, I have cured him of staring, though. Now he may hang up there and shine, that I may see myself. If I only knew how to manage to move away from this place, I should so like to move if I could. I would slide along yonder on the ice, as I have seen the boys do. But I don't understand how. I don't even know how to run. <laughs> yes, ice skating's fun. Yes, it is. Okay. Oh, away, away, barked the old yard dog. He was quite hoarse and could not pronounce bow wow properly. He had once been an indoor dog and lay by the fire and he'd been hoarse ever since. Oh, the sun will make you run some day. I saw him last winter make your predecessor run. He did. And his predecessor before him. Oh, away, away. They all have to go. <laughs> Oh, well, I don't understand you, comrade, said the snowman. Is that thing up yonder to teach me to turn? I saw it running itself a little while ago, and now it has come creeping up from the other side. Oh, you know nothing at all, replied the yard dog. Oh, but then you only been patched up lately. What you see yonder is the moon. And the one before it was the sun. It'll come again tomorrow and most likely teach you to run down into the ditch by the well. For I think the weather is going to change. I can feel such pricks and stabs in my left leg. Well, I am sure there is going to be a change. <laughs> How does he know that? Well, Millicent... I think he had an injury a while back and he can tell when the weather changes, when it's gonna rain or snow because of it. Wow. Yeah, very special. Okay, okay. So the snowman said, I don't understand him to himself, but I have a feeling that he's talking of something very disagreeable. The one who stared just so now and whom he calls the sun. 
is not my friend. I can feel that too. Ow, oh, away, away, barked the yard dog. And then he turned around three times and crept into his kennel to sleep. Oh, that's what they do. Yeah, I know. They turn around and around before they go to bed. It's very funny. Yes. Well, there was really a change in the weather. Towards the morning, a thick fog covered the whole country round, and a keen wind arose, so that the cold seemed to freeze one's bones. But when the sun rose, the sight was splendid. Trees and bushes were covered with hoar frost and looked like a forest of white coral, while on every twig glittered frozen dewdrops. That sounds pretty. Yeah. The many delicate forms concealed in summer by luxuriant foliage were now clearly defined and looked like glittering lacework. From every twig glistened a white radiance. The birch, waving in the wind, looked full of life, like trees in summer, and its appearance was wondrously beautiful. And where the sun shone, how everything glittered and sparkled as if diamond dust had been strewn about while the snowy carpet of the earth appeared as if covered with diamonds. Ooh! From which countless lights gleamed, whiter than even the snow itself. Ooh! Yes, yes, that's beautiful! Yes, this is really beautiful said a young girl who had come into the garden with the young man, and they both stood still near the snowman and contemplated the glittering scene. Summer cannot show a more beautiful sight, she exclaimed while her eyes sparkled. And we can't have such a fellow as this in the summertime, replied the young man, pointing to the snowman. He is capital. But the girl laughed and nodded at the snowman, and then tripped away over the snow with her friend. The snow creaked and crackled beneath her feet as if she had been treading on starch. Oh, but who are these two? asked the snowman of the yard dog. And you have been here longer than I have. Do you know them? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Yes. No, of course I know them, replied the yard dog. She has took my back many times, and he has given me a bone of meat. I never bite those two. But, but what are they? asked the snowman. Well, they are lovers, he replied. Oh, they will go and live in the same kennel day by day and gnaw at the same bone. Oh, away, away. But are they the same kind of beings as you and I? asked the snowman. Ah, well, they belong to the same master, retorted the yard dog. Certainly, people who were only born yesterday know very little. I can see that in you. I have age and experience. I know everyone here in the house. I know there once was a time when I did not lie out here in the cold, fastened to a chain. Ma, ma, no way away. Hmm. Well, snowman thought, ah, the cold is beautiful, but do tell me, only you must not clank the chain so, for it jars all through me when you do that. Oh, does it? Well, he's very sensitive. Oh, wow, yes. Hell, away, away, barked the yard dog. I'll tell you. Here's my story. They said I was a pretty little fellow once. That I used to lie in a velvet-covered chair up at the master's house and sit in the mistress's lap. They used to kiss my nose, yeah, and wipe my paws with an embroidered handkerchief. And I was called Ami, dear Ami, sweet Ami. 
What's a Mimi? It's a French word for friend. Oh. He continued. But after a while, I grew too big for them. And they sent me away to the housekeeper's room. So I came to live on the lower story. You can look into the room from where you stand and see where I was master once. Oh, for I was indeed master to the housekeeper. It was certainly a smaller room than those upstairs, but I was more comfortable. For I was not being continually taken hold of and pulled about by the children as I had been. Now, I received quite as good food, or even better. I had my own cushion, and there was a stove. <laughs> it is the finest thing in the world at this season of the year. Now, I used to go under the stove and lie down quite beneath it. Now, I still dream of that stove. Ah! Away, away. Oh, wait, Heidi, um, um, the dog was in love with the stove too? Yes, it, it seems so. My goodness, this is a juicy story. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, so what happened next? Let's see. Does a stove look beautiful? Asked the snowman. Is it at all like me? No, oh, it's just the reverse of you, said the dog. It's as black as a crow, and has a long neck and a brass knob, and it eats firewood so that the fire spurts out of its mouth. Wow, Heidi, that sounds amazing. Yes, that's what these stoves do in the winter. Oh, I see it, I see it. Well, he continued. No, we should keep on one side or under it to be comfortable. You can see it through the window from where you stand. The snowman looked and saw a bright, polished thing with a brazen knob and fire gleaming from the lower part of it. The snowman felt quite a strange sensation come over him, and it was very odd. He knew not what it meant, and he could not account for it. But... There are people who are not made of snow who understand what it is. Yeah? Why? Well, we'll see in the story. It'll explain. I think it's where he started to fall in love with the stove. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I understand. Okay. So, the snowman asked, And why did you leave her? asked the snowman, for it seemed to him that the stove must be a female. And how could you give up such a comfortable place? Well, I was obliged, said the yard dog. They turned me out of doors and chained me up here. I had bitten the youngest of my master's sons in the leg. Because he kicked away the bone I was gnawing. Bone for bone, I thought, but they were so angry. And from that time on, I've been fastened with the chain and lost my bone. No, oh, no, Heidi. Yeah, okay. Ow, he continued. Don't you hear how hoarse I am? Ugh. Away, away. I can't talk any more like other dogs. All I say is away, away. That is the end of it all. But the snowman was no longer listening. He was looking into the housekeeper's room on the lower story, where the stove stood on its four iron legs, looking about the same size as the snowman himself. Oh, what a crackling I feel within me, he said. Shall I ever get in there? It is an innocent wish, and innocent wishes are sure to be fulfilled. I must go in there and lean against her, even if I have to break the window. 
Wow, lady, that's intense. I know. No, ow, 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 you must never go in there, said the yard dog. For if you approach the stove, you'll melt away, away. Oh, no, Heidi. Yeah, Miller's Hunt. We, it's a shame, but it could happen. Oh, no. Yeah, because he's made of snow. Oh, no. Well, he's very brave. Let's read on, read on. Okay. Well, the snowman said, I might as well go, for I think... I am breaking up as it is. During the whole day, the snowman stood looking through the window. And in the twilight hour, the room became still more inviting. For from the stove came a gentle glow. Not like the sun or the moon. No, only the bright light which gleams from a stove when it has been well fed. So when the door of the stove had opened, the flames darted out of its mouth. Wow, yeah. Well, this is customary with all stoves. The light of the flames fell directly on the face and breast of the snowman with a ruddy gleam. No, oh, I can endure it no longer, said he. Oh, how beautiful it looks when it stretches out its tongue. Well, the night was long, but did not appear so to the snowman who stood there enjoying his own reflections and crackling with the cold. In the morning, the window panes of the housekeeper's room were covered in ice. Oh no, yeah, oh. Well, they were the most beautiful ice flowers any snowman could desire, but they concealed the stove. These window panes would not thaw and he could see nothing of the stove which he pictured to himself, as if it had been a lovely human being. He couldn't see her anymore? No, not at this moment. Oh, okay, let's see what happens, though. Well, the snow crackled and the wind whistled around him. It was just the kind of frosty weather a snowman might thoroughly enjoy, but he did not enjoy it. And how, indeed, could he enjoy anything when he was stove sick. Stove sick? Yes, it's when, um, when you're in love with a stove. You're stove sick instead of love sick. Oh, <laughs> I get it, yeah. Okay. Ow, that is a terrible disease for a snowman, said the yard dog. I've suffered from it myself, but got over it. Away, away. He barked and then added, Ah, oh, the weather is going to change. Well, and the weather did change. It began to thaw. Oh no, Heidi. Yeah, Millicent. As the warmth increased, the snowman decreased. He said nothing and made no complaint, which is a sure sign. Oh, no. Yeah. But well, one morning, he broke and sunk down all together. Mm, and behold, where he had stood, something like a broomstick remained sticking up in the ground. And it was the pole around which the boys had built him up. Oh, that's sad, Heidi. I know. But his spirit lives on. I know. So. Ah! Ah! Now I understand why he had such a great longing for the stove, said the yard dog. Why? There's a shovel that is used for cleaning out the stove fastened to the pole. The snowman had a stove scraper in his body. That is what moved him so. Now, but it's all over now. Away, away. I know, he said, but this is what happened. Soon the winter passed. Away, away.
away again, barked the horse yard dog. But the girls in the house sang. Come from your fragrant home, green thyme. Stretch your soft branches, willow tree. The months are bringing the sweet springtime. When the lark in the sky sings joyfully. Come, gentle sun, while the cuckoo sings. And I'll mock his note in my one Durings. Yay! And nobody thought any more of the snowman. Ah, oh, that's so sad. I know, Melisande. But until the next year, another snowman will be built. And he too will probably fall in love with the lovely stove, right? Yeah. You're probably right, Heidi. <laughs> okay, everybody. Let's stay warm this season wherever you live. Now, we have a little couple of questions that have to do with love. Yes, that we'd like you to think about before the end of this story ends totally. So, there are questions about love that were brought up when some other children like yourselves heard about the snowman who fell in love with a stove. So, this question came in. These are just things to think about over Christmas. So one of the things someone brought up to us was the snowman in this story falls in love with a hot stove even though it will melt him. Oh. What do you think this story tells us about love? Oh, that's a good one. I'm definitely going to think about that. Well, probably that it doesn't matter what kind a person you are and the kind of person or thing the other person is but if you're you fall in love with them then they're the person you're supposed to fall in love with no matter if you're a stove or a snowman or whatever right pretty perceptive melissa yes i think so what do you think now our second question is the dog in the story uh-huh Believes the snowman loved the stove because he was made of part of the stove shovel in his body when they first built him as a snowman. Do you think we can only love things that share something within ourselves that are similar to us? Or can you love them when that's not there? Why or why not? Oh, I think it's possible to love someone who's different from yourself. But I think it it's nice when they have a part of whatever you have in you in them as well. Yes, but in this story, they're talking about that it's a shovel. Yeah, well, not all of us. We're human or animals. We're not going to have shovels within us. I know, it was <laughs> But I think it's just a figure of speech. You know, someone who comes from the same background as you or someone who understands something about who you are. I get it. I understand. Well, these are powerful things to think about. Okay, so over Christmas, think about that. These are powerful things to think about, about love. In the meantime, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas, everybody. And it's a perfect time to take a nap. Heidi told me to tell you that. So continue to stay warm next to the fire. Lay your head down and take a little nappy poop. Okay, Melissa, well said. Thanks, everybody, for watching.